Hello, this is Projectarian and I'm Jacy. And this is Luna. She's a Lima that I spent the last 400 years designing and another 100 years writing the pattern and another 100 years having the pattern tested. <laughs> so I'm delighted to inform you today that I finally settled on a release date for the pattern. In today's video, I'm going to show you an invisible color change technique that I developed specifically for Luna's fingers. So let's get into that and at the end of the video, I'll tell you more about the cow. Luna has a color change from dark gray to white on her fingertips and toes. And because it's such a harsh color change, I really wanted it to be perfect. So I went looking around the internet for all the different color changing techniques that there are and none of them were really invisible enough for how fussy I am. So I decided to try and develop something myself and I came up with something satisfactory. There are no discernible color changes on her fingers or toes. So I'm excited to share the technique with you. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna work on a little half sphere. So this is made by working in the round, starting with six, increasing to 12, 18, 24. And then I've got a straight row of 24. So I'm going to do one more straight row and then I'm going to change color. So your color change starts on the row or the round before you want to change the color. So in my next stitch, that is my first stitch of my current round. I'm going to work into the back loop and work a slip stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that in the second single crochet. Into the back loop, work one slip stitch. Then I'm going to tie off. To tie off, I just draw up a loop and cut my yarn. So now I have these two front loops that are still available for working into. So the way that I like to do this is for my next row, I like to begin somewhere around here. Just so that you have a very seamless line of stitches going across where this round ends. So I'm going to start about three stitches back. So I'm going to grab a new color and I'm going to work a standing single crochet into the third stitch from the end. There are a few different ways to work a standing single crochet. The way that I do it is lay your yarn over your hook, then hold your yarn on your hook with your yarn over your hook insert it at the stitch where you want to begin, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through both loops on your hook. You can hold this tail if it helps you stabilize everything. And then I'm just going to carry on crocheting as normal. So I'm going to work a normal single crochet into the last two stitches that I have here. And now on my next two stitches, I only have a front loop to work into. So insert your hook in the front loop and crochet a normal single crochet. And in the next front loop, a normal single crochet. And then you just carry on crocheting as usual. I'm just going to work another straight round, one single crochet in each stitch and I'll show you how to work into a standing single crochet when you reach it again. Here I've returned to the beginning of my round again. Now to work into your standing single crochet, look at it from the top. Notice how every single crochet stitch makes a little V. 
and when you get to your standing single crochet it's a little bit different but you can still see a sort of V that's kind of similar to what you have there. On every stitch you have two loops that you would usually work into. On a normal single crochet stitch you would usually just insert your hook into those two loops. On a standing single crochet, don't worry about the tail, on my standing single crochet if I look from the top I can still see two loops that I could possibly work into. So that's where you want to insert your hook to work your next stitch. So I want to go into this loop and into that loop. So you could come and just stretch that open a little bit, make it really easy to get in there. And then just carry on crocheting. Now because the starting point of my round is no longer here, it's now here, I would use a new running stitch marker. You can tuck this little tail to tighten things up again and then you can work that tail in as you carry on crocheting. Just work over that loose end. I'm going to crochet to the end of the round again. And here I am back at the beginning of my round again. So here I would usually just bring my running stitch marker over and just carry on crocheting. I'll work one more round and then come back to show you how invisible the color change really is. At this point I'm going to pull my running stitch markers out. there you have your invisible color change. So now the only evidence that there is to see is that we have a little bit of a curve here, but that's just because this was worked in the round. It has nothing to do with the actual color change. But if you look at the stitches, there is no stitch that looks different from the other stitches. They are all perfect little Vs Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Luna's Crochet Along will officially kick off with part 1 on the 4th of June. You can sign up right now, check the description box below for links. Leading up to the cowl, you'll get the patterns prelude on the 21st of May so that you can start gathering your supplies. The prelude will tell you absolutely everything that you need to know to prepare for the project, including all your tools and supplies and your yarn quantities, everything that you need. Luna's pattern is quite complex. My patterns are rated from beginner to intermediate to advanced, but Luna is actually rated as an expert level pattern because she was that hard. <laughs> I wanted to make her as realistic as possible, meaning that her um, proportions match a real Lima as close as possible. And that wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but I know you guys hate sewing. So the real challenge for me was to get all of this detail with the open mouth and the nostrils and everything, but to crochet it all in one piece so that there's no sewing. So you get your wish, but the trade-off is that it's a pretty complex piece to crochet. So there is a little bit of hand sewing. You'll still have to attach her eyes and her ears, her tail and her paws. They're all very easy though and difficult to mess up. I also wanted to make her um, fully posable so she has arms and legs that can move and she has a 
full wire armature inside from the tips of her toes to the top of her head to her fingertips and to the tip of her tail. So she can do all sorts of poses. She can climb and read and knit and pick her nose, you know, all the most important things. Now, although this is a very complex pattern, I always try to make my patterns as accessible as possible. Um, I would like my motto to be that if you can crochet, you can make any of my patterns. So I really do try hard to make my patterns easy to follow and Luna is no exception. The pattern is jam-packed with all the information that you'll need to make her. Um, it has, I think, 800 pictures um, and it's a high quality PDF so you can zoom in as close as you need to to see all the details. The pattern also contains a lot of extra tips and techniques to help you out. There will also be some videos here on my channel to demonstrate some of the most complex parts of the pattern. I'm not going to be filming the whole pattern, just the parts that are the most difficult where you might get stuck. Other than that, there will be support groups on Facebook as well, so if you have any questions, you can post them there and get help. Um, there's a whole community of people to guide you through step by step, so check the description box for links to those groups as well. I started designing this pattern at the beginning of 2020 and it took me about eight months to design Luna and then another few months to put the pattern document together and then a few more months to have the pattern tested. So it's been quite an adventure and I'm so ready to let her loose into the world. Designing her was extremely difficult and if you'd like to see behind the scenes of my blood, sweat and tears, you can check out the Luna the Lena Luna the Lemur hashtag on Instagram to see behind the scenes of um, where I shared the progress pictures as I went. It was extremely frustrating and there were a few nights where I went to bed crying and wanting to give up because I just couldn't figure out how to make this face. But of course now it's all figured out and written down so you get the fun part which is just following the pattern. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I've poured my heart and soul into this pattern for over a year now and I am so excited to share her with you. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Also doubles as a winter warmer. <laughs>